in history, there are some famous friends. You've got Thomas Jefferson and John Adams, founding fathers who were best friends. You've got Frank, Dino, Sam, the Rat Pack Baby, best close friends. You've got Matt Damon and Ben Affleck. You've got the DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, oh, Will Smith himself. Much more important in my opinion, you got Ruby Ruby Roo and Shaggy too. But you do have some friendships that weren't so great. You got Bonnie and Clyde, and you got George Washington and Benedict Arnold. Oh yeah, baby. George Washington and Benedict Arnold were good friends. And that's important for what we're going to be talking about this Sunday. So, let's talk about it. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? That's right. You heard it correctly. George Washington and Benedict Arnold, the traitor. Yeah, you, you betray a friend and you're known as a Benedict Arnold. We'll get you, you Benedict Arnold. They were friends. They were good friends. In fact, George Washington had a deep admiration for Benedict Arnold. That's mind blowing. Deep admiration for the biggest traitor in the history of the United States? From George Washington? Like, the most well known president who truthfully was the reason that we were able to have so much success now? And I just don't. Bah! Yeah, you heard it right. Don't blow a gasket, don't go nuts. It's a big deal. It was actually because of that deep admiration and respect as a warrior and the trust as a friend that Benedict Arnold was able to try and betray the United States, the young United States, but the United States on such a great scale. It was because of that very trust. Really, the lesson that we need to learn there is that you've got to be extremely careful in choosing your friends. Which brings us to Mephibosheth. Bro, what are you talking about, man? I'm sure that we remember the story of Mephibosheth. It's found in 2 Samuel chapter 9. If you don't remember that, I will link to last week's video so that you can go back and see it. But it's a super important story. I want to fast forward from where we were up to 2 Samuel chapter 16. I'm sure that you will remember from last week's passage of scripture, 2 Samuel 9, like we just said, oh, Ziba himself, King Ziba. Um, okay, definitely not king because the king was David, and that's kind of the point. Ziba was supposed to take care of Mephibosheth and Mephibosheth's family. Fast forward to 2 Samuel 16, he does not. He does the opposite. He betrays Mephibosheth and Mephibosheth's family. What? Betrayal to the deepest, most soul-devastating and heart-crushing degree. Ziba. Ziba betrays Mephibosheth, and he does it because King David's son, who was also betraying him, decides to try and claim the throne for himself. And so David, for his own safety, has to leave. And as David is going, he runs across Ziba. He looks at Ziba and says, Yo, Ziba, where's Mephibosheth? Well, your royal highness, Mephibosheth has seen what's happened to you at the hands of your own son. And he has decided that now is the opportunity that he can claim what's rightfully his and he can take power. That's right. Ziba, the betrayal, lies to King David and tells him that Mephibosheth is using this opportunity to take the throne away from him. He lies and says that Mephibosheth is trying to become the king like his grandfather in place of David. And that, my friends, is a big, fat, stinking, honking lie. Mephibosheth wants no such thing. In fact, David runs in to Mephibosheth a little bit later on. Before we get there, though, 
It's important to see David's reaction. He gets so angry. He about blows a gasket and he says to Ziba, you know what, Zippy B? Because of this great betrayal, you get all of Mephibosheth's land, everything I gave to him, all of the prophets, everything that was Mephibosheth's is now yours. The stinking no good rat. So what happens when David runs into Mephibosheth and finds out that old Zippy B, old Ziba is full of, of just lies and nonsense? He doesn't do anything to Ziba except for take away half of what he just gave him. That's right. As a result of trusting Ziba, Mephibosheth lost all of his stuff. Once David finds out that Ziba was lying, Mephibosheth is restored half of what he had. David says, just split it in half. It'll be okay. The trust in Ziba was misplaced. And it cost Mephibosheth half of all of his stuff, which he was using to take care of himself since he was crippled. It is so incredibly important for us to choose our friends wisely and to avoid letting Zybas be close friends of ours. So there's four things that we're gonna talk about to hopefully help you avoid letting a Ziba into your life and, and actually be very careful about who you let in. The reason we're gonna talk about that is because it says in scripture that bad company corrupts good character Absolutely. Who you have as your friends determines who you will be. Are you going to let someone be the Clyde to your Bonnie? Bonnie and Clyde. They were close. They were friends. They were tight. They led each other the wrong way and down a bad path. You are who you hang out with. So what are the four things we're doing? Well, number one, Ziba likes to point out the faults in others. Number two, Ziba tells lies. And you'll catch them in that. So if, if you have a friend who likes to only ever point out faults in others, then that's a problem. And if they're not telling the truth, that's another huge problem. Don't let that person be your close friend. Number three, if you let a Ziba into your life, they're going to betray you. If you have a close friend that only ever points out faults in others and they lie, eventually those criticisms and those lies are going to impact you. A Ziba will betray you. So right here, I always think it's important to make a note. You can't introduce people to Jesus without knowing them. But you don't have to make everyone be your close friend in order to introduce them to Jesus. You can talk to them. You can love them. You can care about them. You can let them know who Christ is and get them in a right relationship with our creator God without letting them be such a close friend that they impact your character and who you become. And number four, a Ziba will end up costing you in the end. If you have a friend that's a Ziba, they'll cost you in the end. For Mephibosheth, that was actually money and land. For you and me, that's gonna be our character. It's gonna cost us our integrity, what we think of ourselves. And it may cost us other things too, our reputation. It may, maybe they would steal from us. We don't know, but we know that it's gonna cost us something. And so it's better not to let the Zybas be your close friends. Yes, share the gospel with them. Let them know Jesus. But the friends that are close to us and determine our character help impact us that way. Because scripture says, bad company corrupts good character. Absolutely. And Proverbs, iron sharpens iron. Who is the closest to you directly impacts who you become. So don't let Zybas be your close friends. Rather, be careful about who you choose as your friend. Anyway, that's what we're going to be learning this Sunday. I would encourage you to go ahead and read 2 Samuel chapter 16. Get familiar with the passage before you come. That way you can talk about it with your kids afterward. Anyway, if you got any other questions at all, please feel free to reach out to me. I would love to help answer any questions or any thoughts that you have. Help direct you maybe in having a conversation. Be sure to look for an email that will come about 1130 in the morning on Sunday that has a family discussion guide in it so that you can go over what your kids are learning. Until Sunday, we love you so much. God bless you. Bye-bye.